Halloween, Samhain, All Hallows Eve, Spooky Season. This time of year has a lot of different names, a lot of different traditions that all get woven together to make it what it is. Since it is such an important holiday for us, we thought it would be time to talk about the true and secret origin, which you probably already know most of, for Halloween. So let's do that together as we walk down Creation's Pass. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie. I am a Christo-Pagan Druid and Priest of Bridget. Hello everyone, my name is Brian. I am a Christo-Pagan Druid and sous chef to the Dagda. And as you can tell, we're going to be having a lot of fun with today's episode because we are talking about Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, Samhain, which are different but the same, but different, but the same, and how to practice them and how to get ready for this year because it's going to be a magical, amazing time. Before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever that's called on the app that you're currently listening to us on. We do original Christo Pagan and Druid content every Monday through Friday, and we've got a lot of interesting topics coming up, and you don't want to miss a single one. All right, let's just get into it. Samhain. Halloween. All Hallows Eve. Let's start with some brutal honesty here, shall we? Biggest introduction, most important thing I can say here today is no one stole this day from anyone else. No one stole this holiday from anyone else. Wait, you mean the Reagan conspiracy of the corporatization? Okay, the corporations. The, the okay. costume makers in the 80s? No, I'm just kidding. Corporatist <laughs> capitalist America is trying to steal this holiday from the rest of us. But other than that, I really want to start there because there is a whole bunch of so the Christians stole my holiday stuff going on in the world today. And and no, that is not that is not a thing. That that is not a thing. And I really can't stress that enough. The Christians did not steal Yule or Saturnalia or Saul. They didn't. You can try to say that they did as much as you want. They didn't. You see, there's this thing that happens every year. It's called autumn. And in autumn, if you live in an area with deciduous trees, those trees turn colors and all the trees lose their leaves, looking like they're dying. Which makes people have a little bit of existential dread because they realize, oh, that tree looks like it's dying. Wait, one day I will die. Death. And maybe we should uh, think about that some. What we end up finding in free Christian Europe, as well as around the world, is depending on when that time of year is for you, you will have a ghost festival. You will have a ancestors festival. You will have a time of, oh, everything looks like it's dying. Let's celebrate those that have gone on before us festival all around the world. And we can see these in the Norse traditions, in the Irish traditions. In fact, in Southeast Asia, it happens later in the year, coinciding with the monsoons. Because closer to the equator, they have more of a dry season than a winter. And so as the dry season is coming to an end and the wet season is starting to begin, things are struggling a bit. And that's when their ghost festival is. This is a universal experience around the world. Everyone has one. When Christianity came to the Americas, lo and behold, the Aztecs celebrated a ghost festival in the autumn. Shocking. I, I, I just really yeah. need to say this because there's a lot of like Christians that stole our holiday that that is not... That's not the vibe of anything that's happening. And we'll talk about this more as we get closer to Christmas. That one really irritates me. You are taking away from a lot of serious numerological work done by a lot of scribes that were trying to, to make the universe mathematically perfect to the power of numerology. That's why Christmas is when it is. But we'll get it's there. The kind of math that would land a tiny prune on Mars. Yeah. Like that little math. You got to respect that math for anybody. Why is there a song? Why is there an All Hallows' Eve? Why is there a Halloween? Like I said, it's that time of year that people are starting to think about, oh, look, the plants are dying. If we're about to head into winter, we need to make preparations. And so that is why a holiday like this exists. It is a time of year where we are reminded of our own mortality. And in olden days, we're really reminded of our own mortality because it's that time to start counting up the food stores and trying to figure out how many of us are going to make it through winter. Because... Refrigeration didn't exist. Things had to get pickled. 
what you had was what you had. You couldn't run out to the grocery store and pick up more food if you ran out. So holidays like this occurred around the empire. Now, it is true that Halloween is when it is because of the Irish festival. Why? Because it's a three-day festival. Samhain is a three-day festival. It starts on the 1st of November, PGs on the 2nd, and it finishes on the 3rd. But it's one of those fun ones. It starts at sundown on the 31st. So the Irish reckon days the same way the Jewish people do. And so they reckon from sundown to sundown rather than sometime arbitrarily be pinpointed in the middle of the night for the days to change. So November 1st is the evening of the 31st for most of us. Those we change the way we reckon holidays. Christians, like most other people, when they convert to another religion, take their holidays with them. Buddhists did this with Hindu festivals, and Christians did this with their other festivals, with whatever faith they originally came from. Now, I will say, Samhain is different and distinct, as is All Hallows Eve, from the Dios de los Muertos, the Days of the Dead. I am not qualified to speak of the Days of the Dead, and I am not going to. They, they are different. They have a different cultural origin and coincide with the same holidays. But if you're looking for more on that, I would find somebody who feels more comfortable talking about the Dios de los Muertos. I do not feel that that is a place that I can go. Samhain is a fire festival. It's one of the four fire festivals that occur throughout the year, along with Lunasa, which just happened not that long ago, which is preceded by Bieltana, which is preceded by Imolk. They're the cross-quarter days. They happen about halfway between the major solar events of the equinoxes and the solstices. And as the name intimates, they were celebrated with large bonfires. This one was specifically an actual bonfire because you're bringing all of the animals in from the pasture and you have to decide how much food you have in storage for two reasons. One, so you know how many animals to slaughter to start smoking the meat and preserving the meat for the winter. But also, how much food do you have stored up for the animals? How many animals can you keep alive throughout winter until the spring comes and you can put them back out in the grazing pasture? And so they would do the calculations, figure out how many animals they could keep through the winter, how many needed to be slaughtered for food for themselves, and they would literally do bone fires, which is where the word bonfire comes from. They would take the bones and put them in the center of the fire and burn. These were times of celebration. It's the third and final of the harvest festivals. And it is the time when the veil thins. And we say this, and it feels like you say it a lot, because you say it twice a year. We say it for Bielfina, and we say it for Sangwa. It's the time when the veil thins. What does that mean? What that means is the ability for spirit to affect the world is in flux. And it's kind of in flux at all of the fire festivals, if we are to be honest. But it seems most pronounced in the lead up to the solstices. Seems to be when... Spirit seems to, it's that time when spirit has more easy access to us. I like to work off the imagery of thinking back when I was young and would play with ice as it would form on a pond or a bucket of water or, so, or any water surface. When the ice is good and thick, it takes a lot of effort to try to get through to the other side, to the water underneath the frozen layer. And as the veil thins, it's like the ice thinning to where it gets just wispy thin, where you can easily just reach through. In Irish folklore, this is the time when the she open up, the, the fairy tales open up, and you can look in and you can see them in there. You can see them doing their, their thing, and they can come out and move around. This is why costuming became popular, because you want to trick them into thinking that you're one of them so they don't try to snatch you, because that is a thing that the fae have traditionally done. The good neighbors like to bring people home with them. We're like Pokemon to the Fae. They like to collect us. And we don't like being collected. So we would dress up so that maybe they would think that we're one of them. jack o lanterns would be put out. Originally, by the way, horrifyingly carved out of turnips. And if you've never seen it, an actual turnip jack o lantern they are the stuff nightmares are made of. Like, I've seen some really scary designs for pumpkin jack o lanterns but... I prefer ja pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns to turnip ones, because once, have you ever tried to hollow out a turnip? That takes dedication. Now for what? The number two. <laughs> or a lot of Dremel cleaning tall. And number two, they look horrifying. There's something about that. I'm not even going to get into it. 
But these were, again, ways of trying to trick the fair folk into thinking, oh, that's one of our houses, maybe we shouldn't go. This is particularly a holiday where we are thinking about the Fae. And we do this also in around Bielf because they are out and they are about. And the Fae are not demons and they're not angels. They are mischievous. They like to have a good time. They can be a blessing. They can be a curse. They can be tricksters for the sake of their own amusement. And if you've never had an experience with the Fae, you can realize that's why you lost your car keys. If you've never had an experience with the Fae, you've never owned a cat because the fair folk love to play with cats. The Fae are an interesting bunch. Most of the time, they leave us alone unless we make them angry. It's a good time to put out offerings for them. Bread, butter, beer, milk, tobacco. Some Fae really like pipe tobacco, but make sure it's a good quality one. Yeah. Chick in your area. I know around here they love pipe tobacco. Yeah. It's a good time to lay out offerings for them. The nuts are really good. Hazelnuts especially, if you can leave out hazelnuts for them. Why do we do this? To be good neighbors. We're living on their land. It's reminding us of our connection to the land and to all the dwells within it. Now, I could talk about the Fae some more. If y'all really want to, let me know in the comments. And we will do a special episode just about the Fae at this point in this time. But to me, the biggest part of Samhain, because I don't have this experience as much at Bialtana, is when the ancestors come to visit. They come to visit on the second day of the festival for both of these festivals. And it's a good thing to put aside a plate of whatever you're having for your meal for them. Leave out maybe their favorite drinks, put out some water for them, some milk, some butter, the traditional offerings, light a candle, maybe do a special rite at your ancestors' altar. But also, lay down the law. I have ancestors that are not a welcome in my house. And we make this very clear. On the second day of both of these festivals, we will go to the door and we will welcome the ancestors into the house. And very clearly, these ancestors are not welcome. One of my great-grandfathers was a murderer. Not welcome in my house. Not welcome at all. Cannot come here. One of my grandfathers was particularly abusive to me. Not welcome in my house. We used to not ban him from the house and have very bad experiences on the holidays. So we ban him from the house now. So, because he's not allowed. Just because your ancestors are coming to visit does not mean that you have to accept them. This is an important lesson to us, both on a spiritual level of what energies we are wanting to carry on and continue from our ancestry. But in dealing with that generational trauma, you don't have to carry that with you. Those two ancestors in particular, not only are they not welcome in my house, but none of their legacy is allowed to come in either. The pain, the misery, the really bad traditions they tried to instill in the family. Nope, not allowed. Not welcome here. And when you go to open your house for the ancestors, you can lay down those rules as you see fit. We often are very clear. As long as your intentions are love, light, and support, you may enter. Whatever words feel appropriate to you, there are no magical formulas for any of this. I do recommend apples. Apples are very traditional this time of year, and they are a wonderful fruit because you can do a lot of things with them. If you're wanting to celebrate the bounty of the year, have some apples and honey. We're planning on doing that several times in the lead up to Samhain and on Samhain itself. Make yourself an apple crumble. Nothing says Irish holiday more than making a crumble. Oh. Find the things that make you feel like celebrating. What phrase you join? Apples are great for the following reason. Apples are really good for cinnamon and cinnamon is a spice that can bring prosperity into your life. That's the association with cinnamon. When you're having problems with money, it's traditional to put some cinnamon in your hand, go to your front door and blow cinnamon into the wind outside your front door to invite prosperity to come to your house. Not a bad tradition for this time of year. And apples and cinnamon go so wonderfully well together. And when you're cooking with magical intent, you're cooking that intention into your food. And while you know, I do believe that there are spiritual woo-woo things that happen, whether or not you believe that, it's a good psychological thing to do to yourself to be thinking in an abundance mindset rather than a mindset of loss or lack. Because when you're working from a place of scarcity, you often make decisions that aren't the best for you. Sometimes that can't be avoided, but as best we can, we need to avoid those. This is also the time of year for scrying and divination. We're going to talk about that a bit more in a future episode. But traditionally, bobbing for apples was a form of divination. There are a lot of mirror divinations this year. And I will say this for the record. We'll again, talk about this more on our divination episode. 
don't do mirror spraying if you're not ready for mirror spraying. Because if you will absolutely panic if you see something in the mirror. And you don't always see something in the mirror. So don't expect to 100% see something in the mirror. But if you're the kind of person that would have an absolute panic attack if you saw something in the mirror, don't do mirror scrying. Know your limits. Know what is appropriate for you. I think water scrying, cloud, cloud gazing, and the like are really good for this time of year. Especially as we're looking towards what is the rest of the year going to be like. So the, the various names for this holiday are what they stand for. So in the Catholic Church, November 1st is All Hallows. Thus, the night before is All Hallows Leak. All Hallows is the day that they, we celebrate All Saints. It's the Feast of All Saints. Now, the second is the Feast of All Souls. You know, because that's the day your ancestors come to visit. The third doesn't really have a name, and I think that that's sad in a way. But I don't know what would we call it. Every day's day, everybody's day, because the Fae and the spirits showed up on day one. The family showed up on day two. Now everybody's here for day three, and we'll soon be heading back. Have your offerings ready. Be very intentional about what you think those offerings should be, and be ready to celebrate a very grand and glorious time. This is a time to be with your family, to reconnect. It's a time of new beginnings. It is the Irish New Year. Samhain was when the new year started. And as we just practiced the 10 days of all, the Jewish New Year, or the New Year on God's calendar, we're about to do that again. This is kind of the period of the New Year's. It's a good time to be thinking about what is it that you want to do for the year to come? Where do you want to go? How do you want your life to develop? Setting those intentions for the next year. This is the, the last bit of prep work, getting ready for that time. What do we want to pick back up and continue forward? I know for me, I really want to do a whole spiritual practice in the year to come dedicated to the grail and grail mythology. I do this every now and then, inspired by the work of Dion Fortune and Gareth Knight. I am obsessed with some of their imagery of Avalon and the Arthurian mysteries and how all that kind of connects to us spiritually. I've been feeling a very strong draw over the last couple of years to do that. So I got myself a special pup last year so I could start thinking about how I wanted to do the grail rites and stuff and what I want that to look like for the year to come. So that's where my mind is thinking. So be prepared. We're probably going to be talking about all that a bit on the show. But just because that's where my mind is leading me doesn't mean that that's where yours is. And this is a good time, especially in the lead up to the new year, to be thinking, where do you want your life to go? In the yeah, what practices do you want to pick up? What practices do you want to incorporate in on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? This is not the best season to do journeying if you are not well practiced with journeying because the veil is very thin. So a lot of people are tempted to try the, their first journey practices in this time. But because it is so thin and the spirits are so active, it can be harder to find our way back out. So if you are not well-versed in journey practice, if you have not done Imram meditation before, now might not be the best time to start that practice. And I don't want to scare you. It's not that it's too dangerous. It's just, it's both easier and harder. It's easier to get there this time of year. It can be harder to come back this time of year. So if you're not well-practiced, this may not be the best time to pick that up. And also, now's the time to be thinking about what ghost stories do you want to tell? Because one of the most interesting things about this holiday is it is a time for telling all of the spooky stories. And we do this, like we were saying the other day in our episode on the apocalypse, on the end of the world. We tell ourselves scary stories to cope with trauma, to cope with fear. They're a safe place for us to play around with those emotions. Finding stories that Hit those spots just right for you. I'm probably going to read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow again because I, it's kind of an annual tradition for me. I love the story. I love it so much. I even love the uh, Disney animated version of it. I really like the uh, Tim Burton movie version of it. For me, one of the main myths of the season for me. I couldn't tell you why. Because every time I interact with it, I, I come away with a different thought about it something else kind of stands up stands up and stands out to me but i know that's one of the stories i would be retelling this year what stories are you going to be retelling how are you going to be celebrating this album i would really love to know you can let me know down in the comments if you're listening to us on spotify or youtube if you're listening to us anywhere else 
Even if it says you can leave a comment there, they won't notify us. You can leave a comment there. That's fine, but please take it and go over to creationspast.com and click on chat to delete it there. And then we will be able to see it and comment back. While you're there, if you have any money you can throw our way, it really does help us out a lot. You can think about joining a membership over there. Or if you want to support us on Patreon or Kofi, I am CE Dorset on both. That money really does go a long way in helping us to keep the power on, keep put on our table and a roof over our heads. Thank you to everybody who does that. It really does mean a lot. If you have any specific questions about Samhain, I see a lot of videos that come out this time of year and a lot of books that come out this year. Of, Here's what you have to do. You don't have to do anything. It's important to know your ancestors are coming and how do you want to greet them or do you not want to greet them this year? And it's important to know that the spirits are going to be running riot outside. Maybe you should leave some offerings. I think those are the two biggest things to know this time of year. What Samhain practices do you love? What Halloween practices do you love? I think that's the thing a lot of people forget is with these holidays, they're practiced for the benefit of the practitioner. And so often we forget that. It may be good for us to prepare some questions and just ask them. If nothing else, it, it might help bring peace to the individual who feels that burning question we need to ask to ask it. I know my pen's a little freaky in their workout this year. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of questions I want to ask, and I don't wait till saw one for them, but it's a good time to be doing a lot of that kind of scrying work. Mm -hmm. So until next time, may the one spirit inspire you to live in right relationship with your ancestors and with the world. And as the new year is coming, may you be inspired to see the path that you should take for the year to come. Amen. Amen.